lesson 9.6, we're going to add fractional parts of 10 and 100 as tenths and hundredths. We can add fractions when the denominators are 10 or 100 by writing them as equivalent fractions that have 100 as their denominators. Then we add their numerators. We cannot add or subtract fractions with different denominators because they will represent different size parts. We learned about this in Chapter 7, and these videos are linked in the description also. So, when adding tenths and hundredths, we can always use 100 as a common denominator. 100 is a multiple for both 10 and 100. If we list the multiples of 10 and the multiples of 100, we see that 100 is a multiple of both of them. And we can add decimals by writing them as fractions, giving them a common denominator, then add their numerators. We write the sum as a decimal. Bob and Dave are raking the leaves on their lawn. Bob raked four tenths of the leaves. Dave raked 37 hundredths of the leaves. What part of the lawn has been raked? We think we need to add the raked parts to get a total. We need to give them a common denominator before we can add them. Bob raked four tenths and Dave raked 37 hundredths. We have four tenths plus 37 hundredths. To give them a common denominator of 100, we need to write four tenths as an equivalent fraction so that 100 is its denominator. We think 10 times some number is 100. Well, that would be 10 times 10. We need to multiply the 4 numerator by 10 also. That's going to give us 40 hundredths. Now that they have a common denominator of 100, we can add the numerators. 40 plus 37 is equal to 77. That's 77 hundredths. That means 77 hundredths of the leaves were raked. We need to find 13 hundredths plus 1 tenth. We need to give the 1 tenth a denominator of 100. We can multiply both the numerator and denominator by 10. Now we multiply the numerator 1 times 10 is equal to 10. We know we can add 13 hundredths plus 10 hundredths. We have the same denominator, so we add the numerators. 13 plus 10 is equal to 23. Now we need to find 2 tenths plus 9 hundredths. We need to give them the same denominator of 100, so we multiply the numerator and denominator of 2 tenths by 10. Now we have 20 hundredths, so we can write 20 hundredths and add 9 hundredths, it will equal 29 hundredths. Now our add-ins are decimals, and we need to find 3 tenths plus 21 hundredths. So first, we write them as fractions. 3 tenths as a decimal is written as 3 for a numerator and 10 as a denominator, and 21 hundredths would be a 21 for a numerator and a 100 for a denominator. We need to write 3 tenths with 100 as its denominator. So we multiply both the numerator and denominator by 10. 3 times 10 is 30, so now we're adding 30 hundredths plus 21 hundredths. That's equal to 51 hundredths. And when the add-ins are given as decimals, we should write the sum in the same form as a decimal. So we need to turn this 51 hundredths into a decimal. We write a zero in the ones place and a decimal point, and we write a 51 for the hundredths. Now, when we get into fifth grade, we're going to actually add decimals by stacking them and lining their decimal points up very nice like this so all the ones are in the same 
column, all the tenths are in the same column, and the hundredths are in the same column, and then we just add them like we would normal numbers, and we can even regroup them and move them over. So we'll see how to do that when we get into fifth grade. We learned in video 9.5, the last video, that a money amount can be written as a fraction of a dollar. We can add money amounts as fractions, then write the sum as a money amount. We have 31 cents plus 19 cents. We can write this as 31 hundredths. We can write this as 19 hundredths, and we can add 31 plus 19. That's equal to 50. We have 50 hundredths. We can write it as 50 cents. Now we don't write the 50 hundredths in its simplest form as one half because we're writing it as a money amount as parts of a dollar, which is parts of 100. A dollar is equal to 100 cents. A dollar is 100 hundredths as a fraction. 50 cents is 50 hundredths, which in its simplest form is one half. This means 50 cents equals half of a dollar. 25 cents is 25 hundredths, which in its simplest form is one fourth. This means 25 cents equals a fourth of a dollar, or one quarter of a dollar. That's why four quarters are equal to one dollar. We can use our knowledge of equivalent fractions to find an unknown numerator. We've got 50 hundredths plus something, an unknown numerator over tenths is equal to 80 hundredths. Now we know we can't add unlike denominators, but we can first subtract 80 minus 50 to find that unknown numerator, it's a 30, but the numerator will only be 30 if its denominator is 100, not 10. So we can write it as 50 hundredths plus 30 hundredths is equal to 80 hundredths. We can use division to give it the 10 for its denominator again. 30 hundredths, we think 100 divided by some number is equal to 10. Well, that would be 10. 100 divided by 10 is equal to 10. And the numerator wants to be divided by the same amount. 30 divided by 10 is 3. We have 3 tenths. So the unknown numerator is 3. So if you look at this problem, the missing numerator had a tenth for its denominator. So we subtracted first to find out what the numerator would be if it had a denominator of 100. So remember, this missing numerator had a tenth for its denominator. That's why we subtracted first. Now if you look at this problem, the missing numerator has 100 for its denominator. So the first thing we need to do is write 5 tenths as an equivalent fraction. And 5 tenths, we multiply the numerator and denominator by the same amount so that it'll have 100 as a denominator. We multiply them both by 10, and 5 times 10 is equal to 50 hundredths. Now our problem looks like this. 50 hundredths plus something hundredths equals 70 hundredths. Now we can subtract 70 minus 50 is equal to 20. The missing numerator must be a 20. We know the numerator is 20. So in the first problem, the numerator was missing and the denominator was a tenth, so we subtracted. We found that it was a 30. Then we put it back into the form of having a 10 as a denominator. So we subtracted first. In this one, we needed to change the 5 tenths to have a numerator of 100 first. Then we did the subtraction to find the unknown numerator. Tala had one gallon of water. She used 4 tenths gallon to make lemonade and 50 hundredths gallon to make iced tea. How much water does Tala have left? So think, we need to add the amounts she used, then subtract the sum from how much she started with. We have a fraction 4 tenths plus a decimal 50 hundredths. We need to write both 
add-ins as equivalent fractions. We need to write 4 tenths, so it's got a denominator of 100. We need to multiply 10 times some number to equal 100, and that would be 10. So we multiply the numerator 4 by the same amount, 10. That's equal to 40 hundredths. We need to write the decimal 50 hundredths as a fraction, as 50 hundredths. Now we need to add 40 hundredths and 50 hundredths. 40 hundredths and 50 hundredths is equal to 90 hundredths. But we're not finished because that's how much she used to make lemonade and that's how much she used to make iced tea. This is how much she used altogether. The question was, how much does she have left? How much water does she have left? Not how much did she use? So we need to do 100 hundredths for all of her water minus the amount she used, 90 hundredths. That's equal to 10 hundredths. And we can write the answer in simplest form. The common multiple is 10, so we divide both the numerator and denominator by 10. 10 divided by 10 is equal to 1. 100 divided by 10 is equal to 10. That's one-tenth gallon of water left. For this problem, we've got a little table, and it says there's a forest trail, A, B, and C, and it gives their length in miles. A is two-tenths, B is thirty-seven hundredths, and C is twenty hundredths. How far would Emma walk if she walked all three trails? So we think, well, trail A is in tenths, so we need to write it as an equivalent fraction first before we can add them all together to find the distance for all three. We have two tenths. We need to multiply ten by some number so that it will equal one hundred, and that would be ten. We need to multiply the numerator by the same amount, and two times ten is equal to twenty. That's twenty hundredths. Now we can add twenty hundredths and thirty-seven hundredths and another twenty hundredths. Now that they have common denominators, we can add the three lengths, and we can use the commutative property to add compatible fractions first, because we can add in any order. We have twenty hundredths, and look, Here's a twenty hundredths. That's very easy to add together first. Then we can add the thirty-seven hundredths. They have the same denominator, so we just add the numerators. Twenty plus twenty is forty, plus thirty-seven. That's equal to seventy-seven. We have seventy-seven hundredths. So Emma would walk seventy-seven hundredths mile. Two-tenths of the animals in a shelter are cats. Sixty-eight hundredths of the animals are dogs. What fraction represents the number of cats and dogs? We need to choose a number from each column. We need to circle the correct number in each column to complete an equation to solve. So we have two-tenths plus sixty-eight hundredths. But think, we need common denominators before we can add. We need to give this one a denominator of one hundred. And if we multiply the numerator and denominator by 10, we'll get 20 hundredths. So the first add-in will be 20 hundredths. In which number should we circle in this column to be the second add-in? If you said 68 hundredths up here, you're right. And to complete the equation, we need to know what they're equal to. Twenty hundredths plus sixty-eight hundredths is equal to... If you said eighty-eight hundredths, you're correct. This means eighty-eight hundredths of the animals in the shelter are cats and dogs. The other animals might be birds and reptiles and bunnies. So remember, when you're adding unlike denominators, you need to give them a common denominator first. In our next lesson, 9.7, we're going to compare decimal amounts with less than, greater than, or equal to signs. Have a wonderful day. I'm really proud of you for watching math videos, and I hope I'll see you next time.
Bye.